Today on Gadget Class, I'm reviewing a Lux Solus 8,000 milliamp hour battery bank with a built-in solar sail on the top there. This is waterproof, dustproof, and shockproof, and I am going to put that to the test. I will drop it in a bucket of water. I will take it apart and show you guys the sealing mechanism. Um, not much to the box here. Let's take it out and see what we got. I have been testing this thing all week, and uh, it is a step above your basic cheapo eBay and Amazon uh, little battery bank like this. Um, I would recommend this one. If you want to buy this, uh, check out the links in the video description below, or click buy it now up on the Amazon listing you're looking at right now. In the box, you get your charger, your instructions, a little USB patch cable, and a little carabiner. It does have a hole for the carabiner right there. Let's take a look at the instructions here. Not much to them, but they definitely tell you exactly how to work the device. There's not much to it. Pretty simple. It does show us the technical specifications on uh, the internal uh, battery and solar panel. It's showing uh, 120 milliamps for the solar panel output. Uh, that's pretty pretty much standard. A solar cell about that that size is only going to put out um, 120 milliamps and for that reason um, you know the solar panels on these aren't really designed to give you enough power to charge your device um, without actually charging up the battery bank inside if you want to actually use this as an emergency uh, battery bank um, you're going to have to leave it probably sitting in the sun for about three hours. If you want something that you can just plug straight into with direct sun and have enough power to turn on your phone, uh, check out my uh, other links in the video description. Uh, they make uh, fold out solar panels that uh, do a better job for that application. But as a battery bank, uh, this is a really good device. And uh, I like it a lot better than some of the other ones I have tested. On the inside, there are two eight uh, 4,000 milliamp hour LiPo batteries. I'll show you that here in a minute. It does have a built-in flashlight. Uh, I don't think any of the other ones do. It's not super bright, uh, but it's probably about, you know, 100 lumens, maybe maybe 80 lumens. Uh, bright enough to kind of see what you're doing and plug in your devices. It does have a, like SOS mode and flash mode as well. So overall, as a battery bank, it's very simple, very easy to use. Um, you just press the button, plug in your device, and uh, go to town. Um, it did fully charge my iPhone 6S Plus. It did fully charge my LG V10 without a without an issue. It gets up to 100% and stops. I did test it using a constant current uh, USB uh, multimeter here um, at a 1 amp rate plugged into the one amp port, um, I did get a milliamp hour rating for the battery pack of 7804, 7,804 milliamp hours. And that's pretty damn close to the 8,000 milliamp hours that it's rated at. In fact, that's quite impressive. Um, I didn't do it at any other charge rates. I could do it at a, like a 0.75 amp and I might actually get a little bit more. Um, and that is correcting for the upstepping from 3.7 volts up to 5 volts. You always lose a little, you lose a little bit of your uh, amp hour capacity by stepping up the voltage. So I multiplied the actual value by 1.35 to get 7804. I did uh, test it charging um, on the input side as well, and I got a similar value on the charging side as I did on the output side. So in terms of output, I was able to charge up to two amps, no problem. Um, it maintained that one amp uh, output for uh, five and a half hours. Um, the internal electronics are solid. I would recommend this. Let's go ahead and cut to uh, taking it apart and I'll show you how it's built. Let's take a look on the inside of this thing. I'm actually uh, pretty impressed with uh, the seal design. It is a full engineered seal, and it's actually better than a lot of uh, automotive seals that I've seen that are designed to withstand actual pressure. Um, you have the seal that touches both mating halves of the plastic all the way around on both sides, and every single screw goes through a hole in the seal. So when it's screwed together, you're clamping through the screws, and you're clamping both halves of the plastic, to um, a, a nice thick rubber seal there. Um, each one of the USB ports 
Um, it is sealed 100% around it. So the only real place where water can infiltrate is through the actual USB cover there. And uh, these are actually designed pretty well. They go in there nice and snug. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that the IP rating is probably um, uh, like a IP67 or an IP65. Um, I would go IP67. I'll go ahead and do a, a water drop test here um, at the end of the video. Um, but the batteries are 606090s. These are 4,000 milliamp batteries, and there are two stacked in there. Um, these are LiPo batteries, so good quality batteries. Um, the circuitry is designed really well. Um, it was not done by hand. It was done uh, by computer or machine. Um, everything looks pretty clean in there. It's got a good charging circuit. Nothing wrong there. It's got a little standoff uh, daughter board there for the uh, flashlight LED bulb. So, nothing wrong with the soldering or work on the inside at all. And uh, now that I've seen how it's sealed together, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's uh, pretty well designed. Let's go ahead and take it outside and see what we can do um, with limited power um, trying to use a phone. Okay, I've had this Luxolis uh, solar battery bank pointed at the direct sun uh, since about 1 o'clock. So it's had the entire evening. It is now 5 o'clock, so it's been charging in the sun for 4 hours. Uh, I wanted to see if, um, if it's in the sun for about half the day, if you could make an emergency phone call. And uh, I've got it hooked up to an iPhone 6S Plus here that is completely dead to the point that it will not turn off. And the battery bank was completely dead to the point that it would not turn on. It does have low power protection. So it's not going to turn off and or it's not going to turn on unless it thinks that it has enough power. And uh, I have been checking it once an hour and it has not turned on. So let's go ahead and try it at the four hour mark. And no, nothing. So it's going to take more than half an, half a day. Uh, if you were in the summertime and you got the good afternoon sun, uh, you might just barely get away with it. But if you're looking for something that actually uh, does solar charging, you're going to want one of these folding uh, solar panels. Awesome, awesome thing to have. This is more of a battery bank that uh, you can uh, keep charged up with the sun. Um, I would recommend using it more as a battery bank, charging it with your uh, USB charger. And then um, it probably would give you power if you left it in the sun for a couple of days. If you took it backpacking and just had it pointed at the sun for a while, it probably would give you eventually enough power to make a phone call. Uh, but the battery bank, uh, the function of the battery bank itself is really good. Um, so the, the solar thing on the all of these uh, solar chargers is more of a, you know, it, it's more of like a supplemental feature. Um, the main feature is that it's waterproof and that it... Uh, it can be a good battery bank. So let's go ahead and cut to the water drop test. Time to do a full water submersion test on this Luxolis battery bank. I'm gonna go ahead and blow out the connectors to make sure there is no dust or debris in there that will contaminate the seal. I've had this charging in iPhone 6S Plus for about an hour now, and uh, it's still on four bars, so it's still fully charged. Let's see what happens here. comes right on. Took me a little bit to get it all dried off and get the porch uh, dried out to the point where I would trust plugging an actual uh, phone into it. But let's go ahead and uh, give it a try after that partial submersion test. We are charging at 0 0.93, 0 0.95 amps, 4.91 volts. So it is good and charging. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a full submersion uh, time test.
It did not pass my full water time submersion test. Um, it did fill up with water. I took it all apart, dried it out, and it still works just fine. Um, basically, there's too many points around the front of the device here where water can infiltrate, and they just uh, there's no way to seal those up good enough. Right in the front here, where the solar cell meets the plastic body, there is a little place where it lifts up a little bit. And uh, even though there is a rubber seal in between the solar cell and the plastic housing, uh, there's just not enough pushing down on it to make that seal watertight. Same thing around these, each one of these lights and around the power button. Uh, there is, There are sealing mechanisms in there, but there's no way to get them tight enough to actually make a seal. So I'm going to downgrade the IP rating. You know, I originally started out saying it was probably an IP67. I'm going to downgrade it to an IP65. That means you can get it wet, you can splash water on it. Um, it'll probably take the rain and all that, but don't fully submerge it in water. Um, on the plus side, though, I took it all apart. It had gotten completely full of water, and I just dried it out, and it worked just fine. So the circuitry is built well enough that it's not going to burn itself out if you happen to drop it in water. Just make sure you dry it out immediately. Um, if you do want to turn it into an IP65 rating, take some silicone. Go around where the cell meets the plastic body. Um, just put a little bit around there on the inside. Don't try to do that on the outside here. Um, each one of these light holes, put silicone there and uh, where the power button goes through. Um, those are my place where I found that water is going to get in the most. Uh, the only other place I'm worried about is the micro USB connector and uh, you could technically silicone around each and every one of these ports even though the flashlight, um, you could even silicone the, the seal shut and then it would be a true IP67 rating uh, because the only point of infiltration would be uh, through the, uh, the USB ports there. So I'm going to give it a four out of five, uh, only because it's not truly waterproof. Um, they did design it pretty well, and the waterproofing is probably about as good as they could get it on a, a, battery, back like, a battery pack like this. The LiPo cells are great. Uh, the over and under current and power settings, uh, you know, it does a great job as a battery bank. Um, so four out of five for what it is and what it does. Make sure you uh, hit the yes button for found this review helpful. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel.